Jesus desires to spend time with us. He desires to fill us with His wisdom, with His power, with His Word. He guides us through the dark valleys of life and brings us into the light. When we spend time with Jesus, we will be changed. We will begin to see others through His eyes. We will begin to serve them, to love them, and invite them into His light. What if we walked with Him, followed Him, and began to hear where He's calling us to go, who He's calling us to reach? And then, when we step out in faith, knowing He is with us, it's in that one moment we will begin to see the kingdom of God grow. Bring one to the one. Amen, amen. What's up, Rock Church? What's up, Rock Church? What's happening? We are, we are coming straight from City Heights. City Heights. I want to I wanna say hello to everybody, all our campuses. Now I'm going to say Point Loma out there, uh, North County, East County, San Ysidro, because I am right here in City Heights on El Cajon Boulevard. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. So, so I, I, I talked to all the other campuses because I'm here. This is, this is the hypest crowd, one of the hypest crowds in our church. Amen. I, I, don't, I don't know which one's more hype. But I, I, but I, but I, <laughs> Amen. So, so for all our campuses, um, I, usually I'm in Point Loma broadcast. I'm bro broadcasting from Point Loma, but I'm here in City Heights today. And uh, uh, today I'm so excited about finishing our series on discipleship, uh, third sermon on discipleship. We got a ministry fair today, and so I'm very excited about it. So let's all get on our knees. We're gonna, we're gonna have a, a quick sermon, and then we're gonna get out to the ministry fair. Everyone say ministry fair. Ministry fair. Very good. We gotta go serve. Lord, we thank you so much. Thank you for so much for all our family all over San Diego, all over the internet, all the people watching online, all our uh, micro sites. The people watching online, all our campuses, thank you that you've called us to save, equip, and send. And I pray today as we have our ministry fair on all our campuses that we would all be praying about what ministry we're going to join. I pray we'd all be praying about going to the life class, learn about the ministries, learn about how God has designed us, and getting involved. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give someone a high five next to you. Give someone a high five. <laughs> amen. Let's get those Bibles out. Let's get those Bibles out on three. We're going to say word. If you, got a, if you have a Bible on your phone or whatever, on three, we're going to say word. One, two, three, say word. word. Very good, very good. We got some energy here in City Heights. Let's turn it. Let's turn, to, let's turn to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. First book of the New Testament, chapter 4. We've been looking at this verse every week uh, for the last three weeks. This is week 4, actually, since the first Sunday of uh, January. Uh, at some point, if you date somebody for two or three years, at some point you got to go and get married. And I say two or three years because some of y'all want to get married real quick. Take your time. At some point when you go to college and you graduate, you got to go get a job. At some point, if you're on an athletic team and you work out and you train, you got to go in the game. Everyone say go. go. Today I want to talk about going. Now, we've been talking about discipleship, that Jesus came, he died, he rose from the dead, he made disciples. And before, when he called his disciples, he says, I'm going to, I want you to follow me, I'm going to make you fishes of men. In fact, let's look at that, Matthew chapter 4. He told them three things he was going to do. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. I'll go to verse 18. It said, Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee said to his two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said, follow me. Everyone say, follow me. Follow me. And I will make you. Say, make you. Make say, fishes of men. Say, fishes of men. Three things. He says, follow me. Two weeks ago we talked about 
Jesus saying, follow me, which basically means as a discipleship relationship, I just want you to spend time with me. That's it. I want you to spend time with me. Matter of fact, as I'm talking about this, I want you to be thinking about the discipleship relationship you should be in. Where someone is discipling you, investing in you spiritually, and then someone you're investing in. Bringing one. Right on your, right on your lesson plan, there's a bring one space for you to think about someone you can actually bring into a discipleship relationship. So what Jesus did with his disciples, he was expecting them to do someone else. So the same thing, we need to look at that. We need to have someone disciple us, and then we need to think about who am I doing the same thing for. So the first thing Jesus did, he says, I want you to follow me. Everyone say, follow me. Follow me. Basically, spend time with me. That's it. I know we think about curriculums and hours of Bible study and Bible memory. That, that's fine. And by the way, that's all included. But the first thing Jesus said is, I just want you to follow me. Let's just spend time together. What does that mean? That if you're discipling someone, you know what you can do? Go to the movies together. Have them over your house for dinner. Go, go to your soccer game, whatever. Just spend time together because they are going to absorb, what they, uh, they're going to absorb from what they observe in your life. And then, then the next thing we talked about was show and tell. Everyone say show and tell. Last, <laughs> thank you. Last week we talked about show and tell where Jesus says, I'm going to show you, since you're spending time with me, the next step is I'm going to equip you. I'm going to make you a fisherman. But how I'm going to do that is I'm going to show you how I pray, and then I'm going to teach you what to do it. I'm going to show you how to soul win, then I'm going to tell you to go do it. I'm going to show you how I'm praying and trusting in the Holy Spirit through prayer, then I'm, then I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to show you how I'm reading the word and using the word. He used the Old Testament over 66 times, at least written in the, in the Bible. He's always quoting scripture. I'm going to show it to you. Then I'm going to teach you how to do it. So in our discipleship, our equipping comes from spending time with somebody, seeing what they do, and learning from what they do, not just book study. Because book stu if it's all book study, you're going to become a student in a room versus a disciple out in the world. Can I get an Amen. So Jesus says, spend time with me, that's step one, and then show and tell. I'm going to show you and then I'm going to tell you what I'm doing because you're with me. And we're going to do it out there. Jesus was in the community. He was doing it in real life, in real time. And then he says, go be a fisherman. Go. Everyone say go. go. That's what we're talking about today. It's time to go. It's time for you to now think about, I got this information. And by the way, the equipping process is a lifelong process. You will do it for your whole life. You're never going to stop. So these things work kind of at the same time. Matter of fact, some of the people we're going to see today that Jesus said go, they just got saved. Like, like they, they, well, we'll see in a minute. I'm not going to jump ahead. But they, it, was, it was like you're, you're, you're saved, you're equipped, and you're sent all at the same time. Okay? So don't, don't, don't it's not like I got to do this for a year or two years. And then I, no, go now. So we're going to talk about go. Everyone say go. go. But before we do that, we're going to do our funnel. Everyone get your funnel. Get your lesson plan out. Let's get your lesson plan out. You're going to see on the screen. There we go. Okay. What is our mission? Three words. All the campuses out there, East County, North County, San Ysidro, Point Loma, our mission here is three words, save, equip, send. Let's say it together. Say save. Save. Say equip. Equip. Say send. Send. One more time. Say save. Save. Say equip. Equip. Say send. Send. Very good. Here we go. Save. Everyone write that down. You should be able to fill this in all by yourself. Equip. So after you get saved, you get equipped for the rest of your life, and then equipping leads to what? Yeah. Very good. Sin. Jesus said it's saved. Come follow me. Leave what your old life behind. And then he says, let me show you and tell you how to do life. And then he's going to say, go. Are you with me? Okay, remember that long word which tells us how people get saved? Say it, say it. All the campuses together on three, one, two, three. Very good. What's the mission of the church? How do people get saved? Very good, so good. So how do you spell so good? What's the first letter? What's the second letter? What's the second letter? What's the second letter? I said second three times. <laughs> y'all didn't even, did y'all know that? Okay, y'all just, uh, he's dumb, so we'll just, we'll just keep going. I got you. And what's the last word? Sunday. Very good. What is, what is the S for? People get saved on? Sunday. Right, Sunday and, you know, basically all events we do. And the first O is? 
one-on-one. That means, hey, I want to talk to you. Guess what? If I go out here, stand on El Cajon Boulevard, and by the way, for all you campuses out there, we're standing on El Cajon Boulevard. I'm literally looking out the window at cars go by on El Cajon Boulevard. So if I go out there and talk to somebody, hey, can I tell you about Jesus? You need some food. You need some clothes. How can I encourage you? Share your faith one-on-one. All you have family members, share your faith one-on-one. Then the second O is what? Outreach. And, and it doesn't necessarily need to be in these, this order, but these are just the way we've been talking about it. Outreach. I always make my H that way. Because <laughs> I ran out of space. And then the third one is what? Online. This is the one that's been, we've been blowing up text message online. If you are new, we have this new way of using text message to share the gospel. And every week since we launched this three Sundays ago or so, we've been having about 1,200 people a week get saved. Matter of fact, 64%, well, let me share it to you. It's a, it's, a, it's a way to share a gospel presentation, video gospel presentation through text message. So I'm going to ask all of you to get your phones out. Just get your phones out. We're going to do it right now. And I want you to be thinking about somebody that you know Needs the gospel. Matter of fact, get your phone out and lift your phone. I want to see your phones up. Turn your phones on. Turn your phones on. Very good. Very good. Get your phone out. And here's what we're going to do. Basically, uh, we're going to direct you to text a phone number of somebody you know that needs the gospel. You're going to text a video gospel presentation to them. And here's how it works. You're going to text uh, the word share to 52525, you can do this right now as you're listening to all the campuses. Do this right now. I know we've been doing this every week, and people get saved every week. Like I said, it's about 1,200 people a week, which is awesome. So you're going to text share, the word share, to 52525, and then after you hit send, you're going to get this. We're going to help you share the gospel, so let's get started. What's your name? Put your name in. And again, this is going to somebody you know. You can put your nickname in if you want. Put your name in, and after you put your name in, hit send, and then it's going to ask you for a 10-digit number of, of the person you want to get saved. You want to take out all the dashes. You want to take out all the spaces, take out all the parentheses. It just needs to be 10 straight numbers. And then hit send, and then you're going to see a link come up. And if you want to watch the video, you can watch the link. Not right now in church. But you can watch the, watch the video and then hit the letter Y or type in the letter Y, hit send, and that will send it to your friend. Now, here's what's going to happen. You're going to get a text back saying they got it. You're going to get a text back saying either they watched it and no response, they watched it and didn't finish it, or they watched it and got saved. It will tell you that, and it will tell you a day later. And what it's always going to do is tell you to pray for them and call them. Here's the great news about this. It's about a four-minute video, and at the end of it, they, they, get, they get to be able to say they got saved or not, and then you'll know about that. They're going to get a book text to them, a follow-up book, help them understand how to do a devotional. But it's, it's a challenge for you to call them. Remember we talked about discipleship, and we talked about bring one. Everyone say bring one. Bring this one. is your one. So when they get saved, 64 percent. Almost 7 out of 10 people who watch the video, some people get it, don't watch it. Some people get it, think it's spam. But 6 out of 4, 6 and a half out of 4 people who watch it get saved. If they get saved, now that's your responsibility. Amen? Amen. You were just a fisher of men. You just threw the line out. They said, I want it. Now you go, what do I do? Spend time with them. Show and tell. And you just did go. You just did it. This is it. Spend time with them. So if 1,200 people a week are getting saved through all of y'all, those are people a week that y'all need to be calling up, spending time, praying with them, praying for them. That's ministry. It's not coming here listening to me. It's all of us going out into the world and getting our friends. Can I get an amen? So that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, come follow me. Leave what your life, leave your old life. Spend time with me. I'm going to make you and, and transform you into someone who prays because you're going to watch me do it. You're going to be someone who uses the Bible because you're going to watch me do it. You're going to be someone who surrenders, lives a self-sacrificial life because you're going to watch me do it. You're going, to be, you're going to be someone who soul wins because you're going to watch me do it. This is what Jesus did. And then after he, you get it, you're watching it happen, he's going to say, go. Go. That's today. 
ministry fair. I want to say, you have all of your campuses, you have in your bulletin a list of ministries. And I want to read a few to you because some of y'all might not be in the ministry. We have 232 volunteer ministries. Let's give all those leaders a hand. That's a lot of ministries. Amen. Every campus has ministries. And by the way, these are all the volunteer-led ministries. These are not the, the ministries that have staff. These are all volunteer-led. Last year, uh, they, they served about 15,000 people a month out in the community. Okay? And over 6,146 6, people got saved through those ministries. Let's give those people a hand. Amen. Let me, let me give you an idea, like, what kind of ministry we got. Dog lovers ministry. When I first heard this ministry, I was like, what? They love dogs. But here's what they do. They go out and, they, and they, they, they use their dogs to go out to dog parks and serve people. And they also help rescue dogs that are in the, in the shelter um, and, and save animals' lives. Uh, miracles ministries, people go out to the, to, the, to the mall. Miraculous mall ministry. They go out to the mall and they pro, uh, 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 pray for people at the mall. Can you ever go to the mall and they're trying to sell you perfume? And you walk up, hey, man, hey, man, brother, hey, brother, 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 man, hey, brother, man, hey, brother, man. As you, I don't know, they may not say that to all of y'all, but hey, brother, man, hey, brother. And they, and they try to give you perfume and say, imagine a booth at the mall saying, can we pray for you? People are getting saved and healed at the mall. Y'all are getting that ministry. Yeah. Amen. That's, that's a North County ministry, a moving ministry. These are people that help people move who can't afford to move. Moving is a headache. That's a ministry. People just said, I want a ministry. That's in North County. East County got a shoebox ministry providing shoes to orphans in third world countries. East County has a, a love them up ministry, a ministry to family with special needs. And they've been around a long time, and, and that is a, such an important ministry. They actually go around and get kids with special needs and bring them to church and have their own services. Unbelievable. Have a great heart for those, those kids. City Heights, urban outreach ministry. Y'all are out on the street right here in City Heights. City Heights. And the prison ministry here in City Heights, ministering to people who are in prison, but also the families of people in prison right here in the, in the community. Amen. San Isidro has Church Without Walls. They have a, ch a ministry church services outside to people who are homeless, and they have the church services right outside, and they also have the elderly ministry, uh, which goes to convalescent homes. There's 232 of those ministries. Now, here's the exciting part. When you go to the ministry fair, you're going to learn about all these ministries, and you have it. It's all online. But what we want you to do is get educated, and then we want you to go to life class. Everyone say life class. <laughs> we want you to get educated at the ministry fair. But we don't want you to bypass life class. We want to go to life class so you can find about what your gifts are, your talents are, how God designed you, what he's called you to do. And then say, okay, based on that, here's what ministry I should go to. And here's what I should do in that ministry. A lot of people say, I want to preach. But you're not a preacher. And you suck. <laughs> Sorry. I, I want to sing. You can't sing. I'm sorry. You just can't sing. God hasn't, if God hasn't called you, listen, if God has not called you to do it, you do not want to do it. If I had to sit behind a desk and be an administrator, I would suck at it. I would not be good. I don't do that. I try to avoid that. So don't take it personal. Just take it personal. <laughs> because God designed you. You are marvelously, wonderfully made for this. So you don't want to do this. Are you following me? You don't. So it's, it's one thing to go to a ministry fair and say, oh, I like that, I like that. That's fine. Find out in the life class, one, get in a small group. Number two, find out how God made you, how he designed you, what he made you for, and then say, this is now what I want to do. Because when I, when I found out I was an evangelist, I, I liked it. I didn't, I didn't know it, but I was doing it. And then I went to a class. As a matter of fact, there was a workshop at a conference, and I was the only one to show up at the workshop all by myself. I felt so bad for the guy, but I felt so good for me <laughs> because I got one-on-one. -on -one. And me and him just, it was a room about 30 chairs, 40 chairs, I remember, and me and him just sat in there and talked. And I remember leaving that class, walking down the hall like this. I'm an evangelist. <laughs> I mean, I was like in a daze because the class was on evangelism. I was like, I like evangelism, but I didn't know that's what I was. And I remember leaving that class going, that's what I am. That is so important for you to know. Life class. Amen? Amen? Okay, now let's go to the word. Lesson plan. Go. Everyone say go. go. I'm going to tell you go six times. 
And then you're going to go to the ministry fair. Amen? Amen? Number one, in your notes, go tell of the wonderful things God has done for you. Go tell of the wonderful things God has done to you. Luke chapter 8, the story is in a couple, a couple of gospels. Luke chapter 8, demon-possessed guy, he was in the tombs, he was cutting himself, he was living with dead people, he was naked, he was demon-possessed by thousands of demons. No one could go near him. He was violent. Jesus comes. The demons fall down at Jesus' feet and bow down and say, please don't torment us. Jesus casts the demons out and go into pigs. In verse 38, look what it says, 838, Luke 838. It says, the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. He said, Jesus, I want to be with you. And look what Jesus said. My Bible says return, but I'm going to say go. Everyone say go. go. He said go home. Go home and tell what great things God has done for you. How many of you tell your friends what God has done in your life? I'm not talking about, hey, come to church with me. That's fine. That's a different thing. But how many of you can really say, I want to tell you what God has done in my life? Your testimony, the Bible, the book of Revelation says, your testimony, your story, how God has changed you from being, from being unforgiven, sinner, lost, to being found can defeat the works of the devil in someone's life. That there are so many people who are drowning in their life like you were drowning. Some of you were addicted. Some of you were suicidal. Some of you, some of you were strung out on drugs. You were depressed. You had all this stuff happening in your life. Lost. No purpose. No direction. Had no idea who you were. And then God opened your eyes up to his love. Can I get amen? amen. You need to tell people that. And this guy said, Jesus, I want to I come with you. He said, no, the first thing you got to do is you got to go tell people what I just did for you. Because the Bible says he was dressed and in his right mind. Go tell. And I want that burn in your heart. Who at your job are you talking about, hey, this is what God did for me? Not, 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 not this. This is what you need to do. No, no, no. Here's what he did in my life. Here's what he did in my life. Number two, go preach the kingdom of God, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. Woo! I don't know if I'm ready for that one. That's okay. But you're in the right, we're in the right city for that. Matthew, <laughs> Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 8. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 8. Look what he says. These 12 Jesus sent out and commanded, do not go into the, into the Gentiles and do not enter the city of the Samaritans, but go. Everyone say go. go. Rather to the lost sheep of Israel. And as you go, say go. Preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. Are we supposed to cast out demons? Hey, uh, what do you want to do with them? I mean, you don't want to hang out with them. You know, what, you know what Jesus said? He says, I want you to watch me. He preached the kingdom of God. He healed the sick. He cast out demons. He rose the dead. And then he said, now you go do it. That's it. You're like, well, it's not, not. no, that's it. You go do it. Now, does that mean that you go out, hey, if you, if you see someone sick, pray for them. Before you call the doctor, call the great physician. Before you buy medicine, before you get, before, before, I'm telling you gospel truth. Before you do that, I'm not saying, you, you know, if you, if you, if you, you don't ever go to the doctor. I'm not saying that at all. But if you're getting a cold or if, you're gonna, if you're someone, you find out has someone cancer. I was at the hospital last night. My brother-in-law was in pain. He thought he had a, a, a blood clot. And, and they were saying, you might have this, you might have this. And we said, okay, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. That's the first thing. And you, and you don't pray, oh, God, make them, you know, make them comfortable. No, God, we, we cast that out. We want them to be completely healed. You don't have because you don't ask. You have to ask. Amen? So he's saying go. Everyone say go. Number three, go encourage the discouraged. Luke chapter 7, verse 22. Go encourage the discouraged. Say amen if you have somebody in your life who's discouraged. Go encourage them. Go encourage them. Don't just say, oh, I hope you feel better. Hey, man, you know, I've been there. I know it's hard. Sit down with them. Listen. Share your story. Listen. 
sometimes when people are going through something really hard, especially a death, a lot of times we don't know what to do. Sometimes the best thing to do is just to be there. And don't say anything. Just be there. I'm here. I'm sitting in the other room. Whatever you need. Be an encouragement. When John the Baptist was getting ready to get his head cut off, he was Jesus' cousin. He sent his disciples to Jesus and said, can you ask him, is he really the one? Because I'm sure after all that John the Baptist did, he's thinking, I'm getting ready to die. I want to make sure I gave my life to the right thing. And here I am in, in the prison get, getting ready to die. And if he's really God, why is this happening to me? You ever feel that? Yeah, if I'm a Christian and I'm praying, how come this is happening to me? And here's what Jesus said in Luke, Luke chapter 7, verse 22. Jesus said, make sure I got this. He said, go, go, everyone say go. go. He says, you go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, only God can do that. The lame walk, only God can do that. The lepers are raised, only God can do that. The deaf hear and the dead are raised, only God can do that. The poor have the gospel preached to them, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. Blessed is he who, who, who that is good enough. That's good enough. So when, you, when you're going to get encouraged, just remember what Jesus said. Hey, the gospel works. It does work. And, and, and when you die, because we all will, you will have eternal life. It is there. And if you have people in your life, Jesus says, you're a disciple of mine. You've seen me do it. Now you go do it. Go do it. Don't join a ministry just to have fun. Join a ministry to go bring hope to somebody. That's what it's for. Amen? Amen. Amen. Number, number four, go into the alleys. Go into the alleys. Woo! Luke chapter 14. Everyone say alley. alley. I'm looking at an alley right now. For all you in Point Loma, North County, East County, Santa Cedro, I'm looking at an alley right now. Right across the street. It's an alley. Jesus said go into alleys. Look at chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, verse 21. They're talking about the, the a parable about the great feast in heaven, the kingdom of heaven. And it says, the servant, uh, chapter 14 of Luke, verse 21. It says, the servant came and reported these things to the master. This guy was having a banquet, and he went out and invited people to his banquet, and, and, and the room wasn't full. And he says, I want this full of people who want to taste of this banquet. And here's what he says. He says, he reported these things to the master. The master came out of the house angry and said to the servant, you go quickly into the streets into the lanes of the city, and bring in here the poor, the maimed, and the lame, and the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. And the master said, Go. Everyone say, Go. Go, go into the highways, the hedges, and compel them to come in to my house, for I say that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. Listen, go to the alleys. Go to the parks. Go to under the bridges. When all y'all drive on the freeway, wherever you are around, the, wherever you are watching on the internet, I want you to look under the bridges of the freeway. What will you see? People sleeping. That's their house. Go there. Jesus, go there. Don't be in your little comfortable bubble. Go to the, to the highways and the byways, into the alleys, un, underneath the bridges, into the canyons, wherever there are people, and invite them to a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what he's saying. Everyone say, Go. Two more. Go make disciples. Number five, go make disciples. Go make disciples. Hey, it's one thing to be a disciple. It's one thing to say, okay, I'm, someone's important to me. I go to church. I got someone. I'm, I'm in a small group. But go make a disciple. Look what it says in Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I commanded you, and surely I am with you to the end of the age. Every single one of you who say, I want to be a disciple of Christ, part of that is having a disciple. Follow me, and I will make you into a fisher of men. Follow me, and I will make you into a leader of someone else who follows you, who follows me in your life. Think about who in your life, who in your life you can be invested in. When you text, share, and someone gets saved, Take a personal responsibility to call them, invite them to church, spend time with them. Make sure they are walking with God just like someone's helping you walk with God. Take that responsibility. If we all did that, the kingdom of God does this. If we don't all do that, everyone just comes to church and listens to one guy speak for half an hour. That's not, that's not going to make it. Last one. Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Everyone say sin no more. 
Go and sin no more. The, the, the woman that was caught in adultery, the men were going to stone her. And Jesus said, which one of y'all never sinned? Throw the first rock. And they all dropped the rocks and walked away. And Jesus looked at the woman and says, you are well, Let's read it. Has anyone, he says, has anyone condemned you? And she says, no, sir. And he said in verse, John chapter 8, verse 11, neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. In other words, if you're going to be a Christian and walk with God, live a holy life. Go do it. Don't just listen. Go do it. I want you to put the funnel back up on the screen because I, I want to finish it. Just put the funnel back on the screen, and I, I want to finish the diagram to get you, turn your lesson plan over. Everybody got that? We good? Okay. Everyone, what's, our, what's our mission? Save, quit, One more time. Very good. So we got save, we got equip, we got sin. How do we get saved? Right. And after we get so good saved, what's the next one? Life class. Everyone say life class. Life. Very good. Life class. This is going to help you understand how you were designed, what God wants in your life, and then after life class, you serve. In a minute, I'm going to send you out to the ministry fair. But I want you to remember, the ministry fair is for you to get informed about what ministries are here. But then I want you to go to the life class. And in the life class, you're going to get informed about you. It's very important. You do not want to serve in the wrong place. You want to make sure you are serving in the right place. And if the ministry is not there, doesn't exist that you have a passion for, God may cause you to start it. Amen? Amen. And so in a minute, we're going to pray. And I'm going to send all of you, all the campuses out to your, to your ministry fair. But as we pray, there may be some of you in here and some of the campuses that you need to ask Christ to be your Savior first. You're like the woman in John chapter 8. Jesus is telling you, go sin no more. You got, you're a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned. The Bible says the penalty of sin is death. But Jesus Christ came to give us eternal life. And so before you do anything, you want to decide to follow Jesus. Amen? So in all the campuses, I just want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And all the campuses, I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you to listen very carefully. If God spoke to you during that sermon and you feel like you want to ask Christ to be your Savior, it's as simple as A, B, C. One, admit and accept that you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for your sin and rose from the dead. And then confess yourself as a sinner and say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. So if you would like to ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I just want you to just look at me right now and pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart, knowing that God knows you and loves you very much. Say, dear God, I believe that I'm a sinner. I know the penalty of my sin is death. And I don't want to die and go to hell. But I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and rose from the dead for my sin. And I confess myself a sinner and ask him to forgive me of my sin. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin and fill me with the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just ask Christ to be your Savior, we want to know and we want to email you some resources. So if you just prayed that prayer with me to accept Jesus as your Savior, click on the link that just appeared and we want to send you some free resources. God bless you and we'll see you in heaven.